All right, what's up guys to so the next episode of Teppin. In this one, I decided let's go over Jill Valentine's story. Now, I have done it on my phone when the game first came out, but I had no means of capturing it. Now that I have a brand new account and I am on an iPad and I'm able to connect to HDMI and record, let's go over the story mode since I haven't done any of this on this account yet. And I've even altered Jill's deck a bit. We'll take a look at her deck and kind of like go over some things. I want to main Jill, obviously, as Resident Evil is my favorite franchise of all time. And I thought you guys would enjoy this because I know a lot of you are Resident Evil fans. So let's go through her story. Also, if you haven't already seen, Akuma was released yesterday and he's pretty awesome. So let's go through Jill's story mode. I'm not going to read it because I don't want to butcher anything. Uh, feel free to pause the text so you're able to see it. I love the animation. The art style is beautiful. All right. Oh, I thought our first battle was gonna be against Wesker. I only did this once, and it was a long. It was back in like June. All right, so our first battle is gonna be up against Chun Li. So, like I said, I modified Jill's deck a little bit. Her deck is good. So she is a red element hero, which means she's focused on strength. So. Um, I'm actually going to keep this hand. All right. So she's for, like I said, she's more focused on strength. So why not summon Mikhail? All right. Oh yeah, though that's. There's no point resisting. Just accept your fate. I think I took this out, so if it's in here, they might be forcing me to use her story deck for her deck that's normally there, so that could be a thing. There's no point resisting. Just accept it. So this is going to buff her defense up by two. It's really cool, so they play into the whole idea that, you know, you're using characters that typically use guns, so, you know, you're doing things like reloading, but it's really like adding benefits to the characters. Alright, so I lost Jill. Um, so, <laughs> I'm gonna have Jill go up, up against, actually, let's go ahead and, uh, let's use her rocket launcher. Ooh. Her special. So yeah, um, Chun Li is a support healing character, so that's why her ability shielded the two Sherry Perkins. Um, can I go? I'm actually not utilizing these things properly. Um, Preparations complete. This is going to do 10 damage to the card, to her Sherry at the bottom. And her her directly. So, with that, we beat Chun Li. I'm still learning as we go on. Obviously, you can tell I'm very still very green at this game, but I really enjoy it. And it's so awesome to be able to play as Jill Valentine. Like, who doesn't want to play as Jill? My wish, my hopes, my dreams is I could play as Regina one day as well. And I just also love the fact that 
because Capcom has so much awesome, different, unique IPs that a lot of them don't clash it's together. Mainly, to the only game that does that is Marvel vs. Capcom, or if they do one of those card games. I mean, like the Namco vs. Capcom, or whatever. So I love that... Mm, I'm gonna keep this in. I love the fact that you're able to play as so many unique, different you know, characters like together for the first for time, which is awesome. Yeah, see, this I took out of my deck, so that means that it is uh, definitely playing off her basic deck when you first, you know, use her. So. I'm actually going to... Uh... Hmm... I waited too long. Ooh, might have been a, might have been a bad move. Her Lucia is pretty strong. I'm gonna summon Dimitri. Nope. Yeah, she is just she's just putting everything into this. Just accept your fate. See what it ends up doing. Oh, that was perfect. Okay, cool. So I won that one. Uh, let's go ahead and summon Carlos from Resident Evil 3, who is now getting a makeover. And of course he summons a card. Um, so go ahead and summon Dimitri, who's I, who I originally wanted to summon. And let's go ahead and get rid of Devante, I believe that's his name. Or Donovan from Darkstalkers. Get the hell out of here. I believe how the effect works for that, <laughs> I know, I should be checking in more, I'm still very green at this, like I said, um, is whatever the remaining damage is, it comes off the, if it kills and it has like remaining damage, it can take off of the hero, so that's why it took off so much. Again, I took out some of these cards, so the fact that some of them are still in here is throwing me off a little bit. So, final battle is going to be up against Wesker, which is fitting. Out of my way. You'll make a nice test subject. Uh, I am going to keep this hand. Looks I'm like going to summon Jill first. I forget what this does. Deals one damage to all enemies. Okay. Yeah, I think that's another card I, I may still have in the deck. Can't do that yet. Uh... Let's go ahead and do it. There's no point resisting. Just Take one damage off of her, so... Sorry, off of him. So we'll just, uh... Literally obliterate him in this one shot. Would have happened either way, but, um... Wanted to make sure. Uh, let's go ahead and summon Claire. Claire and Jill together. Something I wish to see one day in a, video, in a Resident Evil game. This is going to damage him times four, so get out of here, Relento. Another one. Uh, this is the one that damages. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm gonna summon Carlos. I'm gonna definitely do this. This is really useful, dealing four damage. So we're gonna get rid of your card, and we're just gonna hit you completely directly, Wesker. So 
you know, I don't know what to tell you. Now I'm starting to understand this word. I think for me, strength is definitely the way to go because I feel that it's very straightforward. And it's kind of the play style that I've always liked, like when I played Yu-Gi-Oh! or whatever back in the day. I always liked going for attacks. Um, and the effe effects are always cool as well, but... Now it's I forgot that I had the fucking one. Time for my that. secret weapon! You'll feel it in the morning! There's no point resisting. Just accept And, uh... Sorry to tell you that you're done, Wesker. Preparations. Do you think I can stand against a what? God? Uh. There's no point. With you. Just accept your fate. Yeah, exactly. Get out of here, Wesker. Yeah, I'm definitely understanding this better. Yeah, and I think strength is the way for me. So I'm glad that Jill is considered a strength hero which is the red emblem because uh that is definitely for me i like the ability of being able to like reload and like do stuff like that because i it's it's go uh, it's cool like i said before that it plays within the lore but actually has a mechanic within the game not every card game does something like that so so they all keep talking about the land of illusion which is Oh, this is an awesome shot that looks just like, you know, the shot from Resident Evil 3 in the opening, but a modern version of it. Looks great. So everyone's heading to the Land of Illusion. I wonder if one day we'll get, like, an updated story up mode, like, for everybody. So, uh, every time you beat a hero story, you got an achievement, which is something you get to claim, uh, get currency. Which I'm still not familiar with what souls are for. I apologize for being sick. I haven't been able to have the chance to check out a lot of things. Um, I'm going to rate that later. It's kind of funny that asked me now. Um, but uh, yeah, I rated it on my, on my phone, but that's Android, so. Um, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and look at her deck. So that was the story mode, which is awesome. That was really fun. And. Yeah, so you can earn skins, which is cool, like different um, hero art skins, as you see here, but you have to uh, level it up, level them up. So, I don't have anything just yet, because I haven't done anything like other than the story modes at the moment. So, this is my deck so far, so I have altered it a bit, I'll tell you guys what I've added new. I've added, so I added Billy Cohen, who uh, is a 6 MP cost, uh, sorry, a 7 MP cost, uh, with a 3 attack, 9 defense, and his effect is really awesome. So when an enemy appear, a unit appears in front, so like literally in his line, you deal three damage to that enemy, which is awesome. So you can get like a big head start right there. May potentially even destroy it. Um, something else that I added, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, BB Hood. BB Hood's really good. So when I was doing Akuma storyline, uh, I was fighting against some BB Hoods. And the good thing about BB Hood is she may only deal one damage, but she has a ton of defense. And when you play her, you deal one damage to a unit right in front of you, which is great. So uh, she's not a huge attacker, but she'll definitely live for you for a long time. And that's kind of the idea that you want some cards to kind of be able to, you know, sit there, soak some damage. And she's good for that. So I added three of her to my deck. Um, I also added Lucia. God, I love the art for this. She's a really cool character from Devil May Cry 2. Probably the best thing about Devil May Cry 2 besides Dante's appearance. And um, she's a three cost MP, two attack, five defense, which is a really good trade off. You still, you got decent attack and you got decent defense. No effects though. So uh, I also added Leon, who um, I'm still trying to get the hang of the whole EX pocket, which is like EX pocket is like you saw how I was, uh, you know, putting out the, the gun reloading animation or the rocket launcher. That's the EX pocket. So it says here, while on the field, enhances damage dealing effects for cards in your hand. EX pocket and friendly units by one. So, okay. So now I understand that a little bit more. Um, but I thought that, you know, again, three for three cost for two attack and four defense with an additional effect was also uh, worth it. Um, I forgot that I added three Lucias. Uh, Claire was already in the deck. 
And I can't remember if that's all that I added. I think I added Forest as well. Yeah. And when he dies, you deal one damage to all units and to heroes. So that reminds me of a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh cards back in the day. Their effects would be a flip effect or something would be when they go sent to the graveyard, they deal damage directly or they destroy a card themselves with it, whatever. And if this, this, this deals one damage to all enemy units, you have the potential to do that, as well as obviously the hero of health as well. So, and he has decent stats. So to, you know, again, the name of the game is cards that can defend themselves that do well, but also have good effects. So that's kind of what I'm going for in my Jill Valentine deck. Uh, I didn't edit it too much, but I did take out some cards. Like I said, um, I don't remember if I added this, Freezing Fangs, which just gives your, you know, friendly cards that are red emblem, red, you know, strength emblem, uh, plus one attack. So it's a very straightforward game. and I'm starting to understand it more. Like I said, I think for me, strength is the way to go because it's not only simple, but it's all about powering up each other and just have really cool abilities to easily do direct damage or to destroy your enemy cards really quickly without the cost of hurting yourself and i like that um that nemesis card that i had which i'll show you guys here in a second this one in here a noble death it deals three damage to a friendly unit but a four damage to one so it's a trade-off you're most likely going to be killing off some of your heroes i'm sorry some of your unit cards but at the same time you most definitely should be able to kill one of your opponent's cards but I don't like the idea that I'm going to be losing a card in the process. So if you're, you know, you're okay with losing a card in the process, again, it's three damage. So that's pretty significant. A lot of these cards have four, three, uh, you know, dam um, shield. You know, you know, will probably be killing them, and I don't want to do that. So I would much rather have, for me at least, uh, have my character survive. So I don't want any effects in my deck that are going to be killing them um also a few things to know so if you haven't noticed it this the deck editor is very easy and also you can click this deck helper here which will help you kind of like autofill i haven't personally done it because i've always preferred to do it myself you know trial and error um and when you go and you edit your deck here you have all your cards here on the left which are the cards that are in your you know your spare cards basically and you just click them to see what their effects are. And if you want to add a card, for example, if I'm going to add Guile, you just drag and drop and then you let it go and it adds to your card. But you can't have any more than 30. As you see right here, 30 out of 30 is what I have because that is the most that you can. Uh, in a lot of other card games, you can have more than that. You can have less than that. Um, but, and this is 30. And I did find it a little at first to be a little overwhelming. Like, oh, I don't know if I can, you know, get everything that I want in there but I think it's something I'm gonna have to learn to uh, work with and I think that's the fun of the you know the name of the game the fun of it to be able to see what you can do with just 30 cards and you would think in with 30 cards that sounds like a lot but as you see here it could get full pretty quickly especially if you're like me and probably most people and you have doubles so you know that's uh, something to keep in mind um, and then you see here I have 22 at the bottom here, uh, 22 unit cards. So that's 22 cards that go on the field and attack and or defend. And then you have eight, I have eight assist cards. So those cards are not monsters or characters that you summon to attack, but ones that obviously assist in the ones that are on the field or assist in attacking my, my enemy heroes units and or the health themselves or boosting the attack, like I said, of my hero so it's very similar if you've played other card games but i love the fast fun effect of it that it's like you know five minutes boom go in and out and it's something that i want to get better with but i'm starting to understand more and i really enjoy and again the appeal to me is the characters you know look at this like these are the heroes that you've got but you know, you go and you edit your deck and look at the, the, the franchises you've got. You've got Monster Hunter, Street Fighter, Mega Man, Darkstalkers. Um, what else you got here? Obviously, Resident Evil, Devil May Cry. And I'm just so curious to see. Look, Maki, who's actually a Final Fight character from Final Fight 2. Really awesome character. So, I would love to see if we can get Lucia... 
I hope Gun Ho is listening to this. <laughs> I'd love to get Lucia as a hero, especially considering she just made her reemergence in Street Fighter V and is an awesome character. So if you want to get some final fight in here, um, why, not, why not Poison or Lucia? That'd be really cool. Um, <laughs> Brad, obviously from Resident Evil. So it's cool that they've got so many nods to these Capcom franchises. And uh, obviously, you know, they've done a tremendous job of adding the brand new heroes. And the cool thing that I like about it is not only do they add heroes, but then they add a pack around them. And so for the new pack, which is based off, you know, for the release of Akuma, the four seekers, and they give you rewards for signing in. So definitely do that as well. When you click the hero skin, oh sorry, when you click when you when there's a new pack, there's a uh, you know special rarity cards. And for this one, they have a hero skin which is Evil Ryu, for Ryu, which I definitely want, which is really cool. Uh, I've always been a fan of Evil Ryu since uh, what was it, Alpha Two Gold. So um, yeah, and you can see what cards are in the packs and. I just think that they handled this really well. So Day of Nightmares was the pack that released alongside Jill when she released. And I want to definitely uh, get some more things from this pack. I was trying to get Ada um, and uh, Wesker would be cool. Um, so yeah, it, it's just cool. I, I just really enjoy it. My goal is to get better and to put on some good entertaining matches for you guys. I, like I said, I'm going to practice some more. I'm gonna do some more videos. I'm gonna probably the next thing I wanna tackle is most likely doing the Chronicles, which you can get some packs, some free packs and seeing how my Jill deck is. Um, actually, no, I think you're supposed to use specific, if I'm not mistaken, don't you have to use specific uh, decks? Yeah, you do. Okay, let me see how this works. Um, Okay, so with the Chronicles, I can't use, so you have to use specific decks. I will do that, though, at some point. Uh, but I think for me, I am going to try doing some free matches with my Jill deck, seeing how that works out, and see if I can get better, because I really want to make a destructive, really killer Jill Valentine deck. So either way, this video's been going on for a while. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. A little look into Jill Valentine and Teppin her deck, things that she can do, her story mode. She's awesome. If you're a Resident Evil fan, this is a free game. Go ahead, there's a link in the uh, description below. Go ahead, check it out. Like I said, no additional cost to get Jill. She's Even if you download the game today, she's completely available. Go try her out and uh, try some other Resident Evil cards. Again, you can play this on your iPad, Android, you know, phone, whatever, tablet. Uh, hopefully this comes to PC at some point. I think coming to PC would be a really big boost for Gunho and uh, Capcom. So yeah, I'm gonna get some free matches in, try to get better to the point where I can get to ranked and uh, record that for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.